So today we're going to be using Elementals Container Widget to make a custom navigation header from scratch for our website. Okay, one thing just to note, you do need Elementor Pro to make these headers in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here in the back end of our WordPress website, so in order to create a custom header, we're going to go into templates and we're going to say theme builder. Once theme builder has been loaded, you can see here that we can select what we want to start customizing and we're going to create our own header in this video. So we can either click header there or we can say plus here on this header icon. Now that the Elementor Builder has loaded, we're going to close this library window and we're going to create our header from scratch. So what I normally I like to do before I start designing is I head over to this bottom left over here in the settings icon. I click that and I'm going to rename this header to something that's more personalized so that I know that this is the header to my website. So I'm going to call this my header. And then while I'm here, I'm going to change the HTML tag for this and I'm going to say that this is the header for my website. Now that I'm happy with the setting, it's time for me to start building this header. And now to do that, we have to add in our first container. So here we're going to click on this plus icon and here you can choose the type of container style that you want to start off with. I am going to choose this one over here that does the whole horizontal layout. If you want to, you can choose a vertical style layout to put it on the left or the right hand side of your website. Only do that if your theme allows it. I'm using the hello theme here in this example and I'm just going to go with a standard horizontal header for this website. So let's click on that now. The first thing we do before we start adding any widgets is let's just go into the settings of this and let's just change a few things here. So the first thing that I normally do is I change this into a full width. I want to make sure it's on 100% because I want it to go completely across the screen. I and mean, the next thing I'm going to do for my personal design taste is I'm going to change the alignment of these items to be all centered. Now if you want to, you can change the gap settings here. It's a total preference to you. For me in this example, I am going to change these. I am going to put these to both to zero. And then all the containers that's going to be housed within this, then I can change the spacing and paddings there. Now that I'm happy with that, what I like to do is I go into style. I'm actually going to make sure that there is a color to this because if you do a sticky header you have to make sure that there's a color background so that it doesn't become transparent when you're scrolling and clash with everything that's on your web page. Okay for this website I am going to be using a gradient header. So in order to do that over here in this background type I'm going to click on gradient. If you don't want to use a gradient just go into this classic and then choose a normal color that you'd like. Generally most websites have a white header so just make sure that you have a white color and it's not transparent. And that'll just save you from any bugs that might pop up later. So again with me I'm going to be choosing a gradient. Here the first color I'm going to choose as a gray, the second color I'm going to choose as a black, and then I want this type to be radial. Okay, so now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to head over back into layout, and I'm going to make sure that the min height, I'm going to set it to a standard size. For me, I like a 60. For you, you can choose whatever type of design you'd like. Let me just put it at 60 pixels now, and there we go. So now my minimum height is a 60 pixels for this header. Now that I'm happy with that, it's time to add the two main components of the header, and that is the site logo and the navigation menu itself. So in order to do that, we're going to click on this nine dot icon over here, and you can see on the very first widget over here for site is the site logo, and I'm going to drag this over into this container of ours here. Now, if your website doesn't have a standard logo like here in this example, you do have the option of changing the site logo, and here you can load up your logo for your website in case you haven't put one for your website just yet. So let's just do that now quickly. I'm going to hover over the site logo. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to choose the logo for my website and then I'm going to say insert. If you have a site favicon, this is a great time to put that in now as well. But I don't want to do that one of those for this example. So I'm just going to say update for myself. Okay, so now that we have the logo for our website, it's time to add the other component to this header and that's the actual navigation itself. So in order to do that, we're going to go here to the search widget and we're going to type in menu. Here you can see we have the standard WordPress menu and I do have other custom ones, but that's from different plugins. I'm going to stick with the main one, the Elemental Supplies, and that's the WordPress menu. I'm going to take that and drag that next to the site logo. And now we have our navigation menu right next to our site logo in our header. Now we have all our components lined up inside this header. It's time to actually stylize it a bit more. Now you can see that this menu is right next to our logo and we don't want that. A nice trick that we can do now with the new container widget is now we can hover over our site logo and if you click on the pencil icon we can see that the menu for the site logo actually opens up what we're going to do over here is we're going to click on advanced and under size we're going to say grow what grow does is it pushes this widget to the maximum size possible within the space confines of that row and all i have to do now is click onto style and then say the alignment is to the left and that'll push the logo back into the left hand side and now you can see that everything is separated quite nicely within our navigation menu so now that we have the general layout and design of a header it's time to get a look in the mobile version of this and see how this looks there 
So in order to do that, we go down to the bottom left hand side and you can see this icon here that says responsive mode. We're going to click on that. On the top of the screen, you can now see that there's these three different icons that we're going to choose and I'm going to click on the mobile version. So now you can see that this is how it's going to look like on the phone. Okay, so here in the mobile version of our header, you can see that the two different widgets stacked on top of each other. Now I don't want that here personally in the mobile version of my website. What I'd like personally is to have these two next to each other. So in order to do that, we're going to hover over the site logo and I'm going to click on the pencil icon. Once the site logo menus appear, I'm going to click on advanced. I'm going to go to the width and I'm going to say that I want this to be custom. Under custom, I'm going to choose this as say like a 49%. Now, once I've actually put 49%, please do make sure that if you're doing the same thing that I'm doing, that you've actually selected percent and doesn't stay on pixels. You're going to see that nothing's actually changed over here because we still have grow enabled. Now you can keep grow enabled in the mobile version of your design, or if you really want your logo to be a lot smaller, you'd uncheck over here and then you can actually make this custom size to whatever you'd like. The next thing you're going to do is hover over the menu widget. We're going to click on that pencil. We're going to hover to this one's advanced settings. And under width, we're going to say custom, and I'm going to say that this is 49% as well. Now that I've made sure that it's percent, you can see that the two widgets are next to each other. If you don't like the size of the logo like I have over here, you can make the menu widget a bit smaller, because just remember that the grow function is still enabled inside the logo itself. So if I start clicking the smaller, you can see that the logo starts growing automatically because of that grow feature. I do like how this looks like at a 32%, and I'm going to keep it like that here in the mobile view. Now that I'm happy with the mobile view of this, now I can head over back into the main desktop view again. Now just remember, when you're going through different settings of the site navigation and that, just make sure that you're happy with the colors and fonts and that to your own tastes. And obviously that's all going to be here with inside these menus. So in order to change those things, make sure that you have the settings of the navigation open. So you're going to hover over the navigation, you're going to click on its own pencil. And here under style, you can see that you can change the typography, you can change how the drop down will look, how the text color and the background will look on that. So you can play around with that. If you want to see how that it looks like in real time, just make sure that you're in mobile view and you can click on the menu icon itself and you can change all these settings for colors and typography and then the sizing of the text all in real time. Once you're happy with all that, then you can carry on with this tutorial. Okay, so now that we're happy with all the different layouts of our navigation header, let's just add a couple of more features here. If you click on the main widget itself, just make sure it's on the six dot icon. I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna load up all the settings windows on the left hand side over here. What I want to do is keep this visible at all times while a person is scrolling so they can easily click on the navigation window as they're scrolling up and down the page. You know how the navigation header is always sticky on the top of a website? So in order to achieve that we're going to head over to advanced, we're going to click on motion effects, we're going to look for the sticky, here we're going to say that we want the navigation menu to stick onto the top. So you do have the option of how you want this displayed so if you don't want it on the mobile version you can just press the x over here and it won't be sticky in the mobile version but for me personally i do like a sticky on all platforms and then the last thing i do just to stylize my header a bit more you don't have to do this at all obviously you can click on style under border what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a box shadow just to make it pop a little bit off the page so that you know that it's not part of the page underneath and i'm going to make this just a little bit darker and a little bit more spread out I'm going to make the spread about a 5 pixels and I'm going to make the blur about an 18. Now I'm happy with that and it does a nice little pop just off the main page itself. Another thing you can do if you want, just to making it a bit more adventurous, is you can add a border type. So here I'm going to add a solid. I'm going to make sure that these things aren't linked. I'm going to say the top and bottom of 5 pixels and I'm going to change the border color to a blue just to match the theme of the actual website itself. Now once you're happy with all these different changes, the last thing you have to do is just publish this header. Here you're going to see there's a publish settings window. In this publish settings window, we have to add a condition for this publication. And what this does is this sets the conditions to make sure that your header is always published within your website. So you can say for the entire site or to set specific conditions to say when and where the site header can be published. It's a great feature that's very useful for a whole bunch of different applications. But for here in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say add condition. I'm going to say include an entire site and now I'm happy with that I'm going to say save and close. Okay so now that our header has been published let's go have a look at it in the front end. Okay so here's our new header loaded up in our website now as you can see as I scroll you can see that the header stays sticky on the top here and as you can see here's that shadow just to make sure that this is popped off the rest of the website. I know this header with this blue is a little bit extreme but it's great to show the different possibilities for you to use in your website design. Okay, and that is how to make a custom header for your website from scratch using Elementor Pro's new container widget. Very easy to do, very quick, 
and you can make any sort of design as you saw to make your own custom header really stand out. I hope you liked this video. Do remember to like and subscribe because that stuff helps me a lot. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment down below and let me see how I can help you out there. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.